we go, some light. So we have two, uh, so we're going to talk about light. We're going to start with the two major classifications of waves first, and a little bit of wave background. Uh, there's mechanical waves that uh, you have to have a medium, so water waves, um, waves going through a slinky or a string or some kind of disturbance of that nature. Uh, sound waves are mechanical waves as well. Uh, and there's also electromagnetic waves. We have an electro, electric and magnetic disturbance, um, something like a light wave, a radio wave, uh, the waves that you know, bring signals of information to your cell phone. When we talk about wave motion and types of waves, we need to talk about what waves do. Uh, we know energy is transferred um, in interactions between different particles and also through waves. And so a wave basically is transmitting energy through regular repeating motion. Think of a water wave that's oscillating up and down and up and down um, as that energy then is being transmitted through a medium, uh, the matter of the stuff itself, such as the water in a water wave. Um, and we need to keep in mind with a mechanical wave, the medium does not move along with the wave or with any kind of wave actually. Um, so here's an example of that. We have this bowl of water and there's some little particles floating on the top here, the little pieces of dust, little crumbs, and the idea is to have some little disturbances in the water there, like a ripple in the water, for example, and what you'll see is that the water itself will be disturbed by the, the wave, such as that pattern you just saw right there from bumping the bowl, and so the water does go up and down a little bit as that energy passes through, but you can notice the little shadows here that go with the particles, they're not going around along with this wave. You can kind of move them back and forth by sloshing the water, but the actual wave motion itself doesn't actually cause those particles to go anywhere. And so the water itself, like a water wave um, that goes across an ocean, is not water that came from the other side of the ocean. It's the water that's right there. It's just being bobbed up and down. All right, um, so here's a basic picture of a wave that you're probably familiar with. Um, the blue line there represent the medium, the material, such as the water or the string, and then the red dashed line there is our rest position. So that's where the water, for example, would be before it was being disturbed um, from the wave motion passing through. But we're seeing the actual shape there of the wave, that curve being what it looks like when the disturbance is passing through, the energy is being transmitted. Um, the high points we refer to as the crest. The low points we refer to as a trough, and the maximum displacement from the rest position to the crest or down to the trough is known as the amplitude. Um, it's related to the amount of energy that is actually contained in the wave. Um, the wavelength would be then the distance or the length of the wave. Uh, in this case, it's marked off from one crest to the next. Could be from one trough to the next trough, right from here over to here. It could be from any point. It could be from this starting point right here and follow it along until it starts over again, which is right here, which would then measure out as a full wavelength as well. Here we have a picture of the wave again. We're going to put this in motion and actually have the wave moving along to the right. And you can see it moving along to the right. The medium is being disturbed. You're watching the energy, but the actual medium itself, if we look at just one particle in that medium, this pink dot right here, it's actually just going up and down while the wave is going side to side. This is what makes this a transverse wave. And so we can see that the particle is simply moving up and down perpendicular to the motion of the wave itself. It's not traveling along with the wave. So the medium is simply disturbed by the wave. The energy is transmitted along in the direction of the wave motion. We have two different transverse waves. You can see that this one has a longer wavelength, the purple one here, than the green one. So we marked off a couple of spots here. Let's say it took one second to get to this point and two seconds to get to this point. So each of these waves is traveling along a little bit differently. And we can look at the idea of the frequency of waves. This is how many waves do we have in a given uh, period of time. So for the purple wave here, we have two waves that pass in two seconds, which gives us about one wave per second and we refer to the units of per second as hertz, so our frequency would be one hertz. So we know the frequency of this one wave passes by every second. All right. With the green wave, we have three waves, one, two, and three.
3 that passed by in 2 seconds. That gives us 1.5 waves per second or 1.5 hertz. So that's the frequency or how often um, a wave passes by. Another uh, concept we need to be familiar with is the idea of wave speed. Uh, we know speed is distance over time. For a wave, the distance would be the wavelength, how long the wave is, and the time it takes for a wave to travel um, a given that particular distance, that wavelength, is known as the period. And that's actually the inverse of the frequency. So we could say that the, wa the wave speed is the wavelength divided by period, and since the frequency is the inverse of the period, then we can say that the wave speed is the frequency times the wavelength, which is the basic wave equation, and is true for all waves. So now let's talk about light. Here's a short clip here. There's a laser over here, and there's actually a beam of light going across through here. And light's the only thing that you can see, but it does have to be coming towards your eye. In this case, the laser's pointing from the right side of the screen over to the left here. You can see little dots here and here, which are actually little pieces of dust that the laser is reflecting off of there in the video. Um, and so what will happen in this video here is someone will spray um, some fog, basically, some material that gives you a little bit of um, particles in the air so that you can actually see the laser. And so as the spray is put in there, you can see the reflection of the light off of the beam coming from the laser and so now you can actually see it. Right? So the fact that it's, it has something to reflect off of um, allows you to see it in this case. The light itself is an electromagnetic wave, um, which is a transverse wave uh, composed of a vibrating electric field and a vibrating magnetic field. And they are perpendicular to each other. And so if we can see the light, it would look kind of like this. We still have a wavelength and a, an amplitude. You still have a frequency associated with it. Um, and so really, this is probably a better animation. Uh, kind of give you a picture of what the light wave would look like as a transverse wave, specifically. All right, so light itself, you probably heard about the speed of light. Uh, about 299,792,458 meters per second. That is, as far as we know, as fast as anything can go in the universe. And the only thing that can go that fast is light itself. Uh, we symbolize the speed of light with the letter C. Um, all electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic radiation uh, travels at this speed. Typically, we'll use the number 300 million meters per second or 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for our calculations that we look at here. But again, this is, um, as far as we know, the fastest anything can travel. Um, so let's look at the actual formation of the light itself. Um, we have to look at the atom first. Remember that the uh, atom is composed of nucleus with electrons and electron cloud out around the nucleus. Um, those electrons are in specific energy levels in that electron cloud and they can only exist in particular energy levels. They cannot exist at other energy levels in an atom. So for example, if we use a ladder, it's a very common example uh, to look at this and let's say the electrons are located at different rungs on the ladder. Just like you walking up the ladder, they can only exist at those particular rungs, those energy levels. You could only stand um, on those rungs. You can't stand right here. Um, if you try to stand right here, you would fall back down to this rung right here. So if an electron had enough energy to exist at this spot here in between these two rungs, it would actually fall back down and reside at this one here. So the process that forms light itself is known as excitation. And so what will happen is some energy will come into the, into the contact with the atom itself and that energy will get absorbed by the electron that we have right here in this first energy level and when it absorbs that energy it'll move up to a higher energy level and this is the excitation so it'd be like you taking a step up onto a ladder so the energy would come in usually in the form of some kind of light or electromagnetic waves or maybe even electricity and so it really is um, in nature not really it's preference to be at a higher energy level, just like you may not be real thrilled about being higher up on a ladder, especially if it's kind of a wobbly ladder. And so nature then tends to um, 
move back down to the lower energy levels, it tends to have as less, little energy as possible. So the electron then preferring that lower energy then will fall back down to a lower energy level and when it does so it will release energy in the form of an electromagnetic wave. Um, the energy is also released in what we refer to as a photon. Um, light is an electromagnetic wave but it also is a photon, a particle of energy that has an associated frequency. Um, the frequency associated with the wave and that photon is proportional to the amount of energy. So the more energy, the higher the frequency that you're going to have. So here's a real quick um, lesson on um, a little acronym that you're probably real familiar with. Light amplification through the stimulated emission of radiation. That is what laser actually stands for. Um, it's a specific way of taking electromagnetic energy and amplifying it so that it's brighter and focused and what we know as a laser beam and so it, the name um, comes from this process to make this and so I want to show you an animation of light being formed in the excitation and de-excitation. The animation I have actually is specifically a laser formation. Uh, the difference is the stimulation that takes place here. Instead of just allowing the electron to fall back down in a laser, we force the electrons to fall down um, energy levels so we get a particular uh, frequency of light. Um, so the animation here, again, it shows the relative energies of the electrons, not their locations. And here we have a yellow photon comes in and is absorbed by an electron here. When that happens, it reaches a higher energy level. And so in this example here, if we were to talk about our, our basic excitation and de-excitation, we simply wait for this electron to fall back down to a lower energy level and give off a photon. But in the case of a laser, we'll stimulate it. We will send in another yellow photon that stimulates the release of the energy. And when it does so, we have the photon that came in to stimulate and we have the photon that's been released due to the falling down of the electron to a lower energy level. Again, the idea is that you have the excitation where the photon comes in, you have the de-excitation where the energy level is dropped and the photon is released, and that is the light that we see. Now, last thing we want to do um, as we finish up here is a couple of calculations. Um, we want to go back and do a wave speed calculation involving our wave speed frequency and wavelength. And we also want to deal with the energy um, involved with an electromagnetic wave or the photons themselves. And so energy um, for, a, for an electromagnetic wave is what we call Planck's constant times its frequency, um, which deals with the amount of energy times time. Um, we could also do it in terms of Planck's constant times the speed of light in a vacuum, which is C, divided by the wavelength. Remember, all electromagnetic waves still travel at the speed of light of 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we just want to do a couple of calculations with this real quick. Um, so we have a yellow light wave with a frequency of 5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And we want to find out what the wavelength of this yellow light. So we know the frequency. Uh, we know the speed that it's traveling at, which is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. What we don't know is the wavelength. So we use the speed equation, or the wave equation in this case, and simply plug in the frequency and the speed, and that gives us 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second is equal to the 5 times 10 to the 14th hertz times the wavelength. Let's go ahead and just divide out the 5 times 10 to the 14th hertz on both sides, and that cancels out over here, and that gives us a wavelength of 6 times 10 to the negative seventh meters per second per hertz. Um, so we take meters per second, divide that by hertz, which is 1 over seconds, and we'll reciprocate that. The seconds cancel out, which leaves us with meters. So our meters per second per hertz is just a meter. So we have a wavelength of 6 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. All right, next question would be then how much energy does it carry? Um, so we're going to use that equation. Energy is Planck's constant times the frequency. We'll 
things. Let me plug in the 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds times the 5 times 10 to the 14th hertz, the hertz being 1 over seconds. Those seconds cancel out. So we multiply those together and we get about 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 19th joules of energy in this yellow light. So as we finish up this video, just remember that electromagnet waves are transverse waves. Uh, they are also photons, which are massless bundles of energy that have an associated frequency. And light has what we call a wave-particle duality. It has properties of both waves and particles. So that's all for this video. We will pick up with some more light stuff on the next one.